Well, obviously, um, you know, my comments on spit and chiclets were uh, definitely started the this whole process. And, you know, I got to be a little bit more aware of, um, you know, the culture that we're in right now, uh, the things that you can say, whether it's public or whether it's in, in a in a podcast that you're very comfortable telling stories. Um, you know, whether they're your very good friends, like Catherine's one of my best friends. I'm talking about my wife. I'm talking about, you know, trips that we went on. Uh, I, I got too comfortable talking about something that all of us were pretty comfortable talking about. And I got caught in that. Yeah. And, you know, at, at times in a culture today, you got to be more aware of your surroundings and, and people's feelings. And, and yeah, I went too far in, in certain situations. But again, my situations, my friends, like 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 you, and you you're with your friends, your best friends. You say things and this and that, and it's it's important to know that um, at the time, nobody thought it was bad what I was saying. Nobody took took um, offense to it. Nobody was saying anything in the in the social media. Uh, five days went by, nothing on spit and chicklets, nothing on my social media, nothing anywhere, nothing. No, nobody complained until, you know, my boss, Sam Flood at NBC decided that it wasn't right. And we all know NBC has made a lot of mistakes of, uh, of covering up things and, and letting people slide and all that stuff. And, and I think this was their opportunity to, to make a statement and have a sacrificial lamb. And you'd be amazed. The reason that they're not bringing me back is not because of Catherine Tappan. It's not because of Patrick Sharp. It's not because of Anson Carter, and it's not because of the millions of people that have been just so gracious to me, wanting me back on NBC and telling NBC, bring me back. It, 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 my boss, Sam Flood, that th said that those people don't matter. It's because the people that live, that, that work in that studio, that he can't bring me around the people in the studio because of what I said. And I'm like, um, if you knew that there's about 20 or 30 people in that studio that text me and emailed me, you know, sorry, you're going through this. We hope you come back soon. Um, I thought it was a pretty weak, pretty weak excuse why they weren't bringing me back to NBC when millions of people wanted me back. Catherine wanted me back. Sharpie wanted me back. You know, it's, it's pretty, it's, it, it's, it's, it's disappointing. There's no question. And, you know, I feel bad for Catherine. I really do. I, yes. I put her in this situation by telling a story, but again, my wife and her and me, we joke about that all the time. Are you it's, still friends, Jeremy? Are you and Catherine? We're very, we're best friends. She's yeah. one of my, she's one of my best friends. She's still one of my best friends. And she's my wife, one of my wife's best friends. My message to NBC was thank you for, for having me there for 10 years. I loved being on television, having that platform to come to the people and share my love for hockey and all that stuff. Like I said yesterday, um, but I didn't like to be muzzled. I didn't like to be controlled, and uh, unfortunately, um, NBC tried to do that too much, especially Sam Flood, my boss, tried to control me too much, and unfortunately, I couldn't be the real me, and I had to, uh, you know, I had to represent the peacock, but now the peacock's got to represent itself the right way, too, and sometimes, I don't think they do that. So, Jeremy, I, you know, anyone who likes hockey knows you were an all-time great player. You worked at NBC uh, 10 years, great on television. What's next for you now? Great question. Um, I th I've already had five or six um, opportunities to go work someplace. I mean, this was within an, two hours after getting, uh, getting fired yesterday. Wow. Um, you know, I think, you know, the NHL is deciding what they're going to do with the with their NHL contract. I hope they look really hard at uh, a lot of entities, not just NBC. Um, you know, I think having my own show where I can be me, where I can bring sports and hockey to and not be as as mu I guess muzzled, be as opinionated as I possibly can. Um, that's definitely in the works. You know, there are some uh, really cool uh, platforms out there that uh, that I'm looking at, or maybe I might start my own. But there's no question you will see me on Twitter and Instagram a whole lot more because I can actually say what I really want to say now. And trust me, you know me, I will be speaking my mind. I just appreciate you um, allowing me to come on. This is the first interview that I've done since uh, since December, since I got um, suspended. And uh, 
I just want everybody to understand, don't jump to conclusions. Don't, don't, don't make opinions until you really know the hard, true facts of things. Go listen to the podcast. Hear what I said. Look at the how I said it and the situ- and, 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 and the, um, the atmosphere that I said it. Know what's going on. Make your opinion from there because, trust me, um, I'm, the, I'm the first one that loves and tries to make everybody feel happy and does things for charities and does things that a lot of people don't even know that I do that bring a lot of good. So don't throw hatred just because you don't like. Learn the facts first. And I think that's in everything.